Are your Saturdays ready for some hairy hijinks? Here's your look at the neck of toys. Toonie Terrors, Teen Wolf, Scott Howard. Bring the fun of Saturday morning cartoons to your horror collection with these adorable little creeps. Pick your favorites or collect them all and make every day Toonie Terror time. Hmm. Michael J. Fox transforms into a wolf. I find that somewhat ironic. Before we get a closer look, though, at the Teen Wolf's Scott Howard, I'd like to thank the folks first over at NECA Toys that did provide this sample that we're about to have a look at. I suppose it doesn't make any sense really to measure to the top of his head because really this is the highest point on the figure. I mean, suppose technically as well, you can also rotate the arm. Okay, we'll go back to the head. In this case, though, Scott Howard stands at about four and three quarters of an inch tall, or the figure is going to be about 12 and a half centimeters in height. Yes, I'm well aware that a fox and a wolf aren't really technically the same, but they are still of the canine species. Speaking, though, of wolves, though, another wolf that we did receive from the Toonie Terrors line. Here's what Scott Howard looks like with the American werewolf in London, Kessler Wolf. And seeing that Kessler Wolf was packaged along with his mangled buddy. Here's what the figure also looks like along with Jack Goodman. And in this case, Jack Goodman, what's left of him at least, is taller technically than Scott Howard. And another couple of figures we can also bring in as we just recently had a look at these. Here's what the figure looks like along with the male alien from They Live. And sorry, just to move Kessler Wolf, I don't want to get too close to his mouth. Moving Kessler Wolf over just for a little bit. Here's also what the figure looks like with the, then the recently looked at Shorty from Killer Clowns from Outer Space. While doing these recent Toonie tears, it did actually dawn on me that I haven't had the chance to really show you guys the back of the packaging. Because if you remember with the Toonie tears, one of the things that are cool about the packaging is that you can actually cut out the back and use them as a serviceable backdrop. Uh, for me, at least, I don't actually use them for backdrops simply just because I like to have them all kind of closer together. I don't have miles and miles of shelf space, although sometimes it may seem that way, but I just don't have enough space to really be able to cut these all out. Again, like the one that comes in clear with Scott is pretty good, but again, I just don't have the space for that, so I want to move that out of the way. can't believe I did forget to mention those in the other two reviews. What I won't, though, forget to mention is the fact that the figure comes included in this case with an accessory. It's kind of a good idea that he is also carrying an accessory, too, because the way they've actually molded his one arm here, it looks like he's carrying an invisible loaf of bread. That's a big loaf of bread. Rather, instead, what you can actually do is you can take the included uh, basketball, which is a nice looking basketball, has some decent panel lining in there. And then you can take the basketball and you can fit it into his wolf oh, hands. Just fit them in there. In order to do that, unfortunately, I mean, one thing you could do is also bring the arm up a little bit, fit the basketball in there, and then just bring it then closer to his body. You avoid then the worries of having to push the basketball in and possibly rub some of the paint off, either on the inside of his jacket or on the inside of his hand. So you might even want to just do that as well. And one thing it does do is at least it gives him a, his arm a purpose other than just in carrying a, an invisible loaf of bread. Seriously, the loaf of bread was huge. I gotta be going to that bakery. As you can see with the other arm though, it is him pointing. By now, Scott has already revealed to everybody that he is a wolf and uh, probably not a good idea either. He has decided still to stay on the basketball team and use his wolf privileges in order to score, uh, so score points. Now, of course, if anyone had the chance to watch Teen Wolf, we know that Scott realizes at the end that maybe he can't be using his wolf abilities and he should really be just playing as himself. We're not gonna talk about Teen Wolf 2. Poor Jason Bateman think he was actually in that movie but one thing i do really like about this is first of all the pose that they decided to go with now you can go further with this by rotating slightly scott howard's head so he's actually looking like he's pointing to the audience yeah yeah i think actually this pose is him walking through the hallway of the school by this time by this point everybody knows again that like he's a wolf uh, the sculpting on the face is fantastic on this one i would almost even debate the idea that maybe teen wolf isn't i don't know if i would say it's a horror movie I mean, certainly it does have horror, horror elements to it, but I consider it more, I categorize it at least on my shelf as a comedy and not really as a horror. How would you consider, what would you consider Teen Wolf? Would you consider that a comedy or more a straight horror? Let me know down below in the comment section. But either way though, Michael J. Fox was fantastic in that movie. Now, of course, we don't see much of a likeness here of Michael J. Fox. What we do have instead is a rather hairier looking Michael. You can see he does have the beard down below here, some really large... I. I would like to grow a beard like that, but it would look so unruly. I mean, obviously you can grow your hair long like this too. The thing you may not have though is pointed ears. I'd like to hope that you don't have pointed ears. 
He also does have himself a Walkman. Now, you don't see the, actually the rest of the Walkman, but you at least see the earphones that he has over top of his ears. And of course, he's got some sunglasses, so you really aren't able to make out his eyes. Paint's really good on this one, though. I like this one a lot. Uh, unfortunately, though, again, with his arm being the way that it's designed, it really makes the most sense to have the arm always up. Yeah, granted, there's a swivel joint, so you can move it down. And there's swivel points technically also in the hands. So you can bring it down, but then it also looks, it looks really strange and a bit out of place. So I would, again, much rather just to have the hand up with the hand or the arm up with the hand turned ever so slightly. You can see there's a little bit of fur sticking out not only on the tops of his hand, but also out of his sleeve as well. Just think of how much this jacket is holding back. I always wish I could really have like a varsity jacket in school. I never had one in high school. But uh, this one does have, of course, the little B there at the top corner. It's a nice coloring of a mustard yellow. Majority here, we've got the brighter, vibrant blue. And you've got the coloring of his lighter. Would you consider that kind of maybe a light green? A light greenish color, obviously, in the shirt that he has underneath. Uh, for his pants, now his pants, you can see already, he does have a bent knee. They've put him in a slightly opposed position here. Uh, it does kind of off-kelter him just a little bit. Uh, when it comes to him certainly standing but i like the coloring of his pants very bright sneakers and if you did want to use yourself a display stand yes he does have though even though he doesn't have one with him he does have at least a hole in the bottom of his feet so you can attach a display stand if you so wish but like i was saying though with the feet the feet you can see uh one foot here isn't quite leveled i mean the way that they've actually designed it at least it's ball jointed so you can kind of compensate for the fact that his feet aren't completely straight I guess if you get it just right, the figure steam, seems to stand fine. Uh, one thing I also did really notice about his feet, though, is the way that they've sculpted this side of his foot. It actually looks like the foot, is, the shoe is on the wrong foot. I don't think that's the case at all. But for the articulation here for Scott, we're going to go ahead first and just remove the basketball because I just don't want to lose that. Put that to the side. For Scott Howard's articulation, we'll start first with his head sculpt. Now, the head only does move back and forth just only by a little bit. It gets to about that point, and then you can't seem to move it any further this way. You can, however, though, move it this way, which I find is kind of strange. Of course, you can take the arm, as we already talked about. You can take that and rotate that all the way around. Just a straight swivel. You can also rotate the hand all the way around as well. Again, it looks kind of most natural with a pose like that. This arm on the other arm does rotate all the way around. And again, like that looks a little strange. So I, I would probably only suggest to have it one way. Also, by turning it as far up like this, you can see it does cut the shoulder and it looks like a little, a little more out of place. So I'm going to keep it down in this case. You can take the hand and also on this side and rotate it back and forth. The figure does have no waist articulation. The top of the torso is simply just molded into the rest of the lower legs. But at least he does have... Uh, what seems to be ball joints in his feet, which I'm really glad to see. So even at, at, when you do get this guy out of the packaging, you may notice right away that his foot isn't quite angled properly. With the ball joints in place, you can just angle the feet down and have them a little bit more flatter. Let's bring back the basketball once again so it doesn't look like he's carrying around that big giant loaf of bread. Seriously, what bakery is this guy going to? And there we have Scott Howard. The likelihood that we are going to be getting ourselves a Jason Bateman Teen Wolf Two T O O, very unlikely. I think Jason Bateman would rather just not ever speak of Teen Wolf Two ever again. And then again, the other figures that we've already had a look at. Here's what he looks like with the male alien, and here's what he also looks like with Shorty. And why not? Seeing as I already have them close by, anyways. Here's also the bucket of popcorn that came included with Shorty. Yeah, I really like this line. I mean, for me at least, when it comes to Scott Howard and Teen Wolf, I don't know if I would necessarily consider them horror. But I guess you could say also, I really should have brought her also in this for the comparisons. When we think of Elvira, Elvira is horror, but she's also more leaning towards comedy horror. I guess Teen Wolf in that regard is about that same sort of category space. It's not quite horror. It's not quite comedy. It's something delightfully in the middle. I would suspect that Teen Wolf may be the only Michael J. Fox entry into the Toonie Terrors lineup, unless NECA Toys decides to go back to 1996 and give us a Frank Bannister, where Michael J. Fox, of course, plays that character in The Frighteners. But there's nothing really interesting about the design of that. It's literally just Michael J. Fox. So, yes, we're probably only ever going to be getting a Scott Howard, and even then, we're not getting the likeness necessarily of Michael J. Fox. Rather, instead, how he looks as a werewolf. Teen Wolf is a great movie. If, you ever, if you've never got the chance to watch Teen Wolf, I would certainly say just only check out the original. Watch the first Teen Wolf. Don't watch Teen Wolf 2. And it's not Teen, Teen Wolf T-W-O. It's Teen Wolf T-O-O -O also. 
also. And it stars also Jason Bateman, which again, I think he even said in interviews, Teen Wolf 2 was the thing that ruined his career for a while until eventually he came back to movie making again. So I hopefully we don't aren't we aren't going to be getting ourselves a Jason Bateman Teen Wolf 2, very unlikely. But I am happy that we did get ourselves at least a Scott Howard from Teen Wolf, a movie that I haven't really honestly watched in a very long time. It was a movie that was always on Saturday afternoons on WUTV Buffalo. I don't know if anybody ever remembers that station on TV, but it was always a show that I always watched and then just immediately dropped off. I have it also on Blu-ray, so I really should pop it back into my Blu-ray player and give it a good gander. I also have Teen Wolf, Teen Wolf 2, but I won't be, I won't be watching Teen Wolf 2. Either way, though, I'd like to thank the folks over at NECA Toys. Yes, I would. That did provide this sample of the brand new Toonie Terrors Teen Wolf, Scott Howard, that we could have a look at this review. What do you guys think of the figure? Let me know down below in the comments section. And what is your favorite Michael J. Fox movie? Would it be Teen Wolf? Or many would probably likely say Back to the Future. Some may also say, uh, what was that other one? Career Opportunities? No, it wasn't Career Opportunities. What was that other one that he, he moves up in the workplace? I shouldn't even mention that because now I'm going to be thinking about it. What was the name of the movie? Anyways, what's your favorite Michael J. Fox movie? Let me know down below in the comment section, please, and thank you. Also, as well, if you enjoyed this video, why not hit with a like? If you're loving the content you guys are seeing, it was a secret of my success. That's what it was. I interrupted myself. But if you guys are certainly enjoying the content and you want to stick around for more, then make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and that you're also turning on the bell notification. We aren't done yet. No, we aren't with the Toonie Tears. There are definitely some more Toonie Tears that we will be looking at. So if that's the kind of thing you like to come back to this channel for, do please come back to this channel. That's the secret of my success. It really isn't. But either way, they'll come back because we are definitely going to be looking at more Toonie Terrors. And we are also going to be looking at some more NECA stuff. So lots of stuff on the horizon. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Ho!